Hi guys, this is going to be my first video of Civil War II, playing as the Confederacy. Uh, was originally going to be the second video, but I ended up deciding I'd do the first few turns before I did the first video, just because there's nothing much going on, and so early in the war there's a lot of stuff I don't even have control of, and I still don't have control of all of it, but I think there's enough here. Uh, for you to get a good enough look at the game to see how you like it. Uh, let's see, we are in June, early June of 1861. So far, there's only been one battle, which was a small battle at Manassas. Not really anything compared to the historical first battle. Matter of fact, it appeared to be some kind of accident of sorts where they sent a small force that we wiped out. Ah, so as you can see, Beauregard, the Army of the Potomac, is at Manassas currently. Uh, Johnston's Army of the Shenandoah is uh, in Strasburg currently, although I still don't have control of that force. It's still being formed. And I do have a small holding force in Harper's Ferry. Uh, it appears to be giving me the information that McDowell, with, you know, he has a large force there, it doesn't look like he is able to move currently, shown by that red stripe over his picture, so I don't anticipate any significant threat from him right away, but they may form the army differently during the turn, that may change. But in a defensive position, Beauregard should be able to handle that force unless they get strongly reinforced. Alright, so Beauregard going to put on sentry. He's going to hold his position there. Supply train. I want to move up here to the Army of the Shenandoah because eventually that probably will be my offensive force. <clears throat> Generals Johnson, Smith, and Winder. I honestly, I don't think I really have an assignment for them currently, so they're going to stay in reserve in Richmond, I think. Oh, yes, I completely forgot about uh, General Floyd up there. Ah, uh, but I'm not currently able to do anything with him at the moment going to have to decide if I even want to try and hold any of that. It seems like it's usually futile to do so, so I will probably withdraw. Uh, probably to Lewisburg for the moment, maybe farther back once they give me the option to move them. Okay, so put them on sentry. They're not going anywhere. Ah. General Gruder's force is the one. That's interesting. It looks like there is a frigate up the James River. Hmm. Well, by itself, can't really do too much harm. Although, if they brought a transport to army up there, it could be a different story. Uh, I believe historically Magruder, at least during early in the war, he was assigned as a force to make sure, just to watch the troops in Fort Monroe. And that is something I kind of wanted to do, so for the moment, I think I will send Magruder down there. Just keep an eye on Fort Monroe, and then we'll have Benjamin Huger, or Hugger, whichever that is, I believe it's Huger. <clears throat> he should be available soon. We'll probably, he'll probably go north and reinforce. Once he's available, we'll probably send Fredericksburg first, and then I'll decide where I want to send him after that. 
Uh, Suffolk Militia. I will just have them build sentry. Doesn't look like they don't believe they took any damage. Let's take a line of vacations here. We have my industrial options are available, and I believe also my ability to increase uh, rail and river supply. So that will be important. Uh, and then on the previous turn, I had these two ships come out of the James River, and I thought they might take some damage from sneaking by Fort Monroe, but it looks like they successfully got out. So I will send them out to the shipping lanes to uh, hinder Union Supply. They will also move out to the shipping lanes. And then, now uh, my understanding, there is some advantage to having a ship in each particular square. Although, honestly, that may be if you're the defender as the Union more than the uh, attacker. Uh, but it may be for both as well. Because I. I don't think it says specifically here, but I believe I did see where someone explained it carefully. There is some kind of advantage to covering each individual box. So I try and spread them out instead of having them in one large group together. And then I think that's probably all of my ships available. I believe these are still under construction. Yep, there's the Manassas there. Yep, that looks like it. Oh, let me see. General Thompson. I will just have him hold his position. Just to make sure we want to try and maintain control of Harper's Ferry. Uh, I don't think I don't have any particular need. Well, actually, let me see here. General Magruder by himself has a slight command penalty due to the number of men. So, let me assign General Whiting to assist him in command, so that lowers it to a 5% penalty, so they will be more effective in combat than they otherwise would have been. But I don't want to commit any more commanders on that currently to that theater. My experience is they very rarely ever launch an attack from Fort Monroe, so I'm not expecting anything, but you never know. And General Ruggles, he will just stay there and observe. Ah, uh, Richmond Forge. I have the Virginian Reserve here, so that's six, seven regiments. That's a decent sized force, so if I wanted to, I could probably move these guys somewhere. Ah, let me see, what does my strength look like up here? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine brigades, including some very large ones. Now, if I 
click on it a couple times, it shows me all the elements. Six regiments of infantry, regiment of cavalry, and two batteries or artillery. So that's a very strong brigade there. And I've got four regiments here. One cavalry, one battery, and then two of these regiments are conscript though. I don't think they're not quite as strong. Nine, fifteen. Yeah, so they have a lower firepower and initiative and salt damage. I think pretty much just about everything is a little bit lower. Lower discipline. Just all around conscripts just aren't as good, pretty much. And this looks like it's one conscript regiment with three regulars. Ah, uh, yeah, and so overall, right now, this looks like a very strong force, but compared to what the Union is able to muster later on, it's probably not that much, and I probably should reinforce it. So, yeah, let's go ahead and move. I'll move them to Fredericksburg for the moment, and then maybe move them farther up later. And I have General Price's command has come available. Typically, I do spend a considerable amount of time fighting for all of this out here, although I was thinking this time I might take what was a little bit more of a historical approach and just voluntarily give most of this up. That way I can condense my forces a little bit more and perhaps not need to spend as much time sending troops and tra training troops to fight in the West. My understanding historically was that the Confederates had very few troops and they really had little chance out there. And so I'm going to try and do something similar and just use as few troops as possible just to try and see if I can maintain a defense while putting everything I have available into the east. Although, in my experience, the East is actually a lot of times more of a sitting game, just because both sides tend to be so strong looking back at each other, it's a little bit difficult to find a weak point. But if there is a weak point, it's usually just going up here and trying to create havoc up there while they concentrate most of their forces around Washington. So that's what we're going to try and do eventually. Okay, so where was I? Prices command. I think I'm going to have him fall back to Fort Smith. I think that's probably going to be the farthest north point out here in this area that we're going to defend. Fort Smith and Fort Coffee. That's yeah, pretty rough terrain and actually maybe still a take him a while, but yeah, I think that's the line of retreat we're going to use down to Fort Smith. Uh, they will move down. Yeah, they can get there about as quick as Price can get to where he's going, so I'll have them move to Ozark. I'll wait and see. I may try and defend Ozark. Uh, let's see, General Shelby. I don't really have any forces available yet for him to command. Oh, we do have another pack train available, though. Might as well have them go link up with General Shelby up there. 
Ah, yes, we had a regiment I recently trained from South Carolina, so we'll go and have them move north. Uh, I will rail them. Let's just go all the way to Fredericksburg. Even though my rail capacity is low, only moving one regiment will hamper it much, and I'll be able to increase it here soon. A uh, little train and boat symbols there tell me my rail and a river capacity and the red numbers means I don't have enough currently. And then that uh, item there is my war supply, manpower, and money. Uh, as soon as I get done moving my units, I'll increase the rail supply, rail and river. Uh, supply train in Atlanta. Where do I want them to move? Um, well, let's, I think they're a little bit closer to the Western Theater, so I'll we'll just have them move up that direction. Eh, I don't think I have a pressing need. I won't worry about telling them to go by rail, at least not currently. And then I decided I wasn't going to leave any more of the Carolina Department down here for garrison. We've got a couple regiments and a battery there. Two batteries and a regiment in each of the forts. And then I've got two regiments and a battery in Sumter. So I think that should be enough for now. So them, you know, I probably shouldn't move these guys by rail just because the amount of men, it'll take a lot out of my rail capacity. So they'll just march over there. <clears throat> and that looks like the last of my available units to move this turn. Okay, so let me go to my decisions. I desperately need more rail supply and river supply, or river pool to transport more supply. Although that's going to use up most of my war supply for this turn, but it should be worth it in the long run. Okay, so let's, we need to go to war production. Ah, uh, my infantry actually aren't too bad a shape. Little red numbers tells you that's how many units I'm deficient by and I need replacements for. And, I mean, 83, that's actually, that's not too bad. My heavy artillery seems to be in the worst condition, but I don't have enough supply to replace any of that. So let's just replace some of my infantry. Don't have uh, wait, yes I do. Okay, so that'll get me some placements on the way. Won't have enough to train any fresh brigades or regiments. Just replacements for what I currently already have in the field. Uh, let me see if there's any decisions. This, eh, basically it just lowers enemy loyalty. Uh, I'm honestly not sure how much of a real impact that has, if any on their ability to raise troops or anything like that. So I usually don't use this much. Martial law counter until matter of fact there's actually very few of these decisions I spend much time using.
Although building defensive works in Manassas, that would be an important one. <clears throat> I should be able to do that. Get me a little extra money for next turn. Uh, and I think that's it for this turn. So let's go ahead and end that. Doesn't look like much happened during the turn. So let me see. Let's take a look at my notifications here. We sunk eight war supply and four money worth of shipping, and we smuggled in five war supply. Let's see, they captured Muskogee in Indian territory. And that is an area I think I had unguarded anyway. And I'm currently in the process of retreating from all this up here. And they are already at Jefferson City. And outside of Rolla. And let's see what else do we have down here. Stonewall Brigade, okay, it looks like the Army of the Shenandoah is now active, although I don't think it's not officially the Army of the Shenandoah yet. I need to do that as soon as I get an opportunity. And I think it's telling me I have a new ship available. Oh, no, that's just uh, some reason it's telling me about this guy. I don't know why he's already out there. Uh, and actually, for you to be reading shipping, I think you should be on an offensive posture. At least that's, that's how I always do it. If they're reading shipping, I have them on offensive posture. If they're just uh, trying to run by the blockades, they are on a defensive posture. And I always put them on retreat if engaged posture, no matter what area they're in. Okay, so has anything changed? It doesn't look like it. Thompson's here. Uh, I'm finally able to move him. Ah, uh, yes, I can form the army. And one thing to note is currently there is a 20% uh, penalty to command due to the number of troops. Then I turn it into an army, and now I actually have an excess of command. Because once you officially make an army, it just it becomes much more efficient. I think the 18 is how much command I have available, and 12 is the command points being used. And I guess I probably should have shown you that, but their power went up from, I think it was like 560 to 660, so it went up about 100. Increasing the organization of an army, it can significantly increase your fighting power. So it is important to try and do that as much as possible. Uh, and then I'm going to dismiss these groups. 
I notice when you have these bird divisions already formed, even though they're not technically divisions yet, because I'm not allowed to make them until I think it's 1862. And if they're already formed into groups like this, then it won't let me make a division. I have to separate the groups first, and then I can reform them later once I'm ready to make the divisions. And actually one thing to note is the number of the little chevrons there, that tells me how many units are in that group. And if you have a general, if he's got the little chevrons, that means he's got brigades or regiments under his command. And that's what I needed to split up. Because it won't let me uh, make them a division if they already have units under their command for some reason. At least the last time I tried it, it won't let me. So I always split them up and then I reform it later once I'm officially allowed to make divisions. Ah, uh, now let us see. Let's move him up to Winchester. I mean, he's really not strong enough, I don't think, to try too bold of an offensive action, but I would prefer him be closer to Harper's Ferry, or maybe I might move him up to Harper's Ferry to defend that. There is an arsenal, armory, and depot in Harper's Ferry, so it is somewhat important that I maintain control of it, if at all possible. <clears throat> Now, uh, beer guard, he will stay where he's at. Uh, who is this? Why is this legion? Oh, crap. So somehow, Mr. Patterson has gone from over here, I think he was at Morgantown last I saw him, and he has gotten all the way behind me. In this terrain, I don't see quite how that's even possible, but somehow he has gotten there. <clears throat> so that puts General Floyd in a little bit of a pickle up here in Clarksburg. <clears throat> that is one thing to note about this game, if you're unfamiliar with it. You can put things on the same difficulty over and over again, and things do, they will do different things each time, because this has never happened with me. I've never seen them this quickly move a force into West Virginia. So this is interesting. I mean, actually, my best option looks like that's the only force they have in Morgantown. It would probably need to attack Morgantown and then try and retreat down to Strasburg uh, to the army of Shenandoah because he just doesn't look like he's in a sustainable position there. command bonus, and according to this, he's not a great commander to begin with, but I think that's the only choice we've got. I think he's got to attack Morgantown, and you better attack with everything you've got, otherwise you're risking being cut off there in Clarksburg. <clears throat> going to take a gamble and say he's probably moving to Charleston, so I'm going to have them try and retreat to Lewisburg, and they're going to try and get down here to Lexington, and we have a brigade currently being formed down here already, so there'll be some reinforcements. I had better send a general send General Ruggles up here to take command of this, because this looks like if he continues to come down, we may have some kind of situation here. Although I believe General Patterson, I believe he always gets replaced. So I don't know who, if any, general is going to be in command of this briefly. 
And that is actually my timer telling me I should be wrapping up the video soon because I want to try and keep this down to about 30 minutes. Although honestly, I don't know if 30 minutes is long enough for this game, but I will finish this turn and then I'll wrap it up for this and I'll see how it looks. Um, Mr. Magruder. For now, yeah, he's just going to stay on watch on Fort Monroe. I think he's got enough troops under his command for now. Uh, General Huger is available. I will get him marching north. And we will see. For now, I'm just going to have him continue straight north if necessary. I suppose I could always move him over here if it looks like I need reinforcements over here in the Lexington area. I'd be kind of surprised if they can maintain much of a push through there, because usually it's very difficult to maintain supply lines here, unless he's carrying a ton of supply with him. And he does, it looks like he does have some supply units with him, several in fact. So he might be able to make a push all the way down to Virginia, but even then, I don't think there's enough of an area for here for him to raid to get too much supply, so if he does come all the way down, he's probably going to be in trouble pretty quickly, and I'd probably route him. And see, they'll stay there. I just might as well put you on permanent status, because I usually leave them there. Uh, we have some cavalry being formed here. But no for oh wait, here we go. Okay, so we actually have some movable forces here in Tennessee. And currently General Shelby is the only general I have in the immediate vicinity until I get to McCulloch. He's over here in Little Rock. And once they become available for me to move, I imagine I'll move them each to Tennessee as well. I expect General Price to hopefully be able to hold Fort Smith on his own. Although I know I will get some other generals available later. I probably will want to send somebody else to assist him in command. Because he's got a big penalty due to the amount of men he's commanding. And so does my Culloch as well. Uh, but for now, I will get these guys moving. Take them 11 days, so they'll join General Shelby. And General Shelby is a cavalryman. So it would be beneficial to any cavalry to try and get under his command. Got some there. Let me double check what is the bonus that gives. Combat bonus for all cavalry units in the stack this leader is in. He's the most high ranking officer in the region. So it looks like that actually that only applies if he's the highest ranking officer in the region, which uh, actually, I don't think he is. I think, technically, I think it may be... Yeah, I believe McCulloch is the land commander-in-chief in Southwest Theater, which I believe that falls under... Uh, I think that's the same theater that Tennessee is in. Actually, is it Southwest or Southeast? I forget. I could actually find out. Do, 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 southeast. Yeah, Tennessee is actually a southeastern theater. Oh, you know what? It's probably Zollicoffer. I didn't realize he had been raised. No, it's not saying him either. Is there another? 
I think it must have raised in our general here somewhere in Tennessee that I haven't noticed yet. That is the chief land commander. And these guys need to keep tridging their way. I can't tell what does that say? That's say 13 days. Yeah, 13 days to march there. Uh, I don't want to use any more of my rail pool. I still don't have enough, even after I increased it. So they'll just keep marching. Uh, let's try and group these guys together. And that will currently be the Fredericksburg holding force. And I'll go ahead and put them in town. Uh, sometimes a little hesitant to put forces in a town if there's not enough. If I don't think there's enough of them to put up a good enough fight, because if they're in a town, then they'll retreat. They'll just stay inside there, and they oftentimes will let themselves get surrounded. If you put them in the region outside of the town, and if they get attacked, then they'll retreat to uh, another region farther back, which. You'll lose the region, but at least they won't be surrounded. And in some cases, if you don't if you don't have the force nearby to break them out, then you'd rather have them retreat than get surrounded. Sometimes it's worth, in my opinion, to forego the defense bonus being in a town provides. In Beauregard's case, I am currently leaving him outside of Manassas. Although, and once we get this works built here. That should help considerably, even if he's not there. Although another thing worth noting is if your troops stay uh, stationary long enough, they will entrench on their own. Like my current entrench level is 3, and in 23 days they will reach a next level of entrenchment. So even if they're not in town, if you leave them still long enough, they will automatically and get more defensive bonus the longer they're there just by increased entrenchment. <clears throat> okay, so I'll uh, no, leave him sentry because he's not going anywhere. Evans not going anywhere. Uh, I don't think they're going anywhere, not for now. Alright, that looks like all of my units available to move. Ah, uh, so what have I got up here? Oh, wait, no, not there. What do I need in war production? Uh, let's try and get some more. Yeah, we need more infantry replacements. Four there. A couple of militia. Get a cavalry replacement. Big time need in my heavy artillery. Uh, but that would take up most of my war supply. Let me see, can I now actually that looks like I can't increase my river or rail pool anymore anyway. Uh, so I will go ahead and requisition some more heavy guns. I don't think that's enough to train any fresh regiments. Let me... I eh, might as well double check just to see. Uh, let's see, Deep South, what's available? Sharpshooters. And sharpshooters, they're actually, those are always good to have. Really, you should probably have sharpshooters in all of your divisions. Uh, they give a bonus to uh, it, uh, it. It hampers the enemy's ability to deploy. Yeah, I can't remember. That's not exactly how it's put, but uh, they do get. Yeah, here it is. And see, sharpshooter. This unit possesses sharpshooter, which impedes enemy reaction. So it gives an initiative bonus in battle to the whole unit that they're in. And honestly, now when it says unit that they're in, I must—I believe that's just the individual division. 
or in this case they're only in a brigade, but I believe it provides a bonus to the whole division if they're in a division. <clears throat> yeah, so let's go ahead and train some sharpshooters. Uh, let's see, that's North Carolina. Let's train them. Burn. And we could actually train some more. Train some in South Carolina as well. And then maybe a regiment, some more volunteers. As a matter of fact, where do we go? Georgia. There's Georgia volunteers. Train some Georgia volunteers, and I think I'll probably just leave them in Savannah as a garrison force there. Just to help provide some insurance against an end around. Which I think historically, I think the Union did try that a couple times. As a matter of fact, that's how they got New Orleans. They took New Orleans very early in the war by a sea invasion. But I believe there was an incursion in uh, one of the Carolinas, too, early on in the war. Uh, that, should, that actually should be enough war supply for me. I can add a little bit more replacements. Uh, I think we'll have to go infantry, which is fine. Infantry, that's your vanguard of your fighting force anyway. Alright, so I think I will just let me double check my decisions here. Don't think there's anything I want to worry about. Okay, so I think I'll wrap the video up right there for this episode. Thanks for watching.